The Noblest Wonder, a 7 MHz SSB transceiver that's so simple it can be documented on a single piece of A4 paper. And that is the whole schematic diagram. There's just 11 transistors and one IC. Yet, its 2 watt signal is punchy enough to be heard far and wide. Many successful contacts have been made and I'll give you a demonstration of those in just a moment. But first of all, I'll describe the transceiver, go through the circuit and point out some of the salient features. The Noblest Wonder is best described as a cross between a BitX and a Beach 40 transceiver. It shares most of the simplicity of the Beach 40 but the SSB transmit and receive of the bit X. The thing it sacrifices that both those rigs have is frequency agility. Having a look in the top, microphone socket, speaker, headphone socket. Circuit board material is used to mount all the parts. Microphone amplifier for the transmitter, audio amplifier for the receiver, and LM386 on its back. The driver, which is a BD139 transistor, that's its broadband collector transformer. Another BD139 for the transmit power amplifier. It's got a heatsink, and this is the ferrite used in the collector circuit of the final. Here is the relay for the transmit receive, a 12 volt double pole double throw type. And behind the back panel is the Pi network for the transmitter output, but it's also in the circuit for receive. On the back panel, power socket and antenna socket. Underneath, what you're seeing here is the carrier oscillator. The crystal down at the bottom of the screen is for 7.159. That's tweaked up to for 7.160. There's two transistors in the center, both BC548s. That's the oscillator transistor and the buffer. Then the broadband ferrite transformer. And you can see now the balance modulator, which also doubles as the product detector on receive. Moving across, there's the crystal filter. All crystals the same frequency of 7.159 and their respective capacitors. You can also now see four transistors. They are the RF amplifiers either side of the crystal filter. You can see the yellow lead across the bottom. That's actually the power connection. And then for the other side, another yellow lead for the power connection for that one. And remember, these two circuits are only on for part of the time. One is on for transmit and the other on for receive. That's the bidirectional amplifiers around the crystal filter. There's holes in the circuit board. They pass signals through to the other side. Audio comes in through the microphone and is amplified by a BC548 transistor. That can be almost anything, including the 2N222. And I should note that, except for the RF transistors, a BC548 is used in every stage. The audio from the transmit side goes down here to the balance modulator. That's just two diodes and a broadband ferrite toroid. Now, of course, the balance modulator needs another input to work. And that's provided by the carrier oscillator that uses a crystal for 7.159 MHz. Now the value of that is critical to provide proper SSB transmission. In this case, it needs to be 7160 kHz or 1 kHz above. You can change frequencies of crystal oscillators slightly by putting capacitance or inductance in series. Here, I've got 39 picofarads, which worked for me. It's a standard culprits oscillator circuit, and then there's a buffer following. Now we'll look at the balance modulator in more detail. There's the ferrite toroid, that's just three turns of wire that's twisted and then wound on a ferrite toroid, around eight turns. The two diodes, they can be one in 4148s, and the 100 ohm trim pot, which is a balance control. You adjust that for minimum carrier when you're setting up and don't need to adjust it again. That's followed by an attenuator that more appropriately provides a load for the balance modulator. And I should mention, although I've just been calling it a balance modulator, this stage works on receive as well, as a product detector. It's just in reverse. In the middle of the screen is perhaps the most complicated part of the transceiver. 
Right in the centre there's the crystal filter that uses crystals for 7.159 MHz. As it happens, the bandpass is approximately 7.157 to 7.160, providing a lower sideband signal in conjunction with the carrier oscillator which is on 7.160. As for the transistors either side, well two of them are used on receive and two of them on transmit. It's a bi-directional circuit. It makes switching a lot easier than if you had to use relays. If we're looking at transmit, we're taking the low level double sideband signal from the balance modulator and it's going into the lower of the two RF amplifiers. That has 12 volts applied on transmit so is active. The other transistor you see above has 12 volts applied on receive only so it isn't used during transmit and can be ignored. The signal which is amplified goes to the crystal filter, its upper sideband chopped off, and then it's amplified by a further amplifier stage, also using a BC548. That again has 12 volts applied on transmit only. You need these amplifier stages because the crystal filter has a bit of a loss. The bottom part of the page is the transmitter amplifier chain and Pi network. The SSB signal, and it is now SSB because it's passed the crystal filter and has its upper sideband chopped off, goes to the driver. That's a BD139 transistor. The following stage is a power amplifier, another BD139, but this time with a heat sink. The ferrite in its collector is wire wound through a ferrite bead. I'm using a small six hole ferrite bead that's often used in VHF equipment. In the centre of the picture is the transmit receive relay. It's a double pole double three relay with a 12 volt coil. You press the push to talk and that energises the coil of the relay pulling the contacts in. On receive the normally closed connections are used. The two connections for the relay are DC power and the antenna connection. The Pi network is shown here. That's used for both transmit and receive. Its function is to chop off unwanted harmonics on transmit. On receive it's probably less necessary but I've included it anyway. I use one mica Henry RF chokes and you can use for the capacitors disc ceramics though others like polystyrene or silver mica might be lower loss. I haven't explained the receiver very much so we'll trace how its signal comes in. It goes through the antenna connection, through the low pass filter and then through the relay. That's actually, if we follow the contacts, normally closed, goes into a transistor amplifier. That circuit amplifies the signal and passes it to the crystal filter where it lops off signals other than that which you're trying to receive. The signal is very feeble still, so it goes to another transistor amplifier where it's boosted up to a reasonable strength. From there it goes, and we just follow where it says A on the diagram, into the balance modulator, or rather a product detector. That is mixed with the signal from the local oscillator on 7.160, and the difference frequency is fed to an audio amplifier circuit. The first version of the Noblest Wonder had two BC548s as the audio amplifier. That worked and comfortably drove a pair of headphones. However, as a radio that you might want to have at home monitoring a particular frequency, that's inconvenient. You want to be able to have a speaker on that radio so you can hear it from another room and rush in if someone's calling. And so I replaced it with an LM386. Note there's a few more components than on the normal LM386 amplifier because it's a higher gain than usual. DK3 YE, um, DK3 NAF, yeah, I was wondering what you were actually using. I thought it may have been your um, Beach 40, so I popped it on upper sideband to um, listen if I can hear that um, other sideband coming through, but I couldn't, so um, yeah, you're doing really well on 2 watts. Uh, uh, Station. Uh, you're peaking 555, 55, BK3YE. 